Hey there, everybody, and welcome to GameSpot's all-access coverage of Sleeping Dogs here at Comic-Con 2012. I, of course, am Sean McGinnis, and I've got Kyle and Andre here from Square Enix to guide us through a somewhat extended demo of Sleeping Dogs. We're going to have some fun in Hong Kong, right, guys? Yeah, I believe this is the first time we've actually shown this, this much part, yeah. Yeah, in open world, so I hope people really like this. Um, it's going to be direct feed and... Yeah, of, yeah. Well, they won't crash. <laughs> <laughs> Not out yet, but uh, yeah, uh, we're gonna be showing off like this open world segments. Yes, that's correct. Like, just want to show like to the people, it's not only about action, but it's also about the open world and how we recreated uh, Hong Kong. A lot of the demos we've already shown have been very architected experiences. A lot of people say, you know, is this an open world game? Well, here's here's proof. You know, there you go. So, so as we start, uh, we're like the rest of our all accesses here at Comic Con. We are gonna be fielding questions from fans here at Lou and Mickey's. Uh, Kelly, Kelly, Mrs. Violence, you have our first question right yeah I got my buddy Daniel here and he's uh, really excited about the extended series of the demo so Daniel what's your question for the developers all right um, so this is a pretty unique property just for uh, Square Enix or any in general um, what sources of fiction really um, influenced you in uh, developing a game like this all right they want to know what sort of develop like what inspired the development of sleeping dogs all right, let's talk about the inspirations behind Sleeping Dogs, because there's some pretty fun territory here, right? A vast uh, library of Hong Kong action movies. Sure. Um, so obviously, like uh, we've been inspired by Inferno Affair and all these kind of, uh, you know, gangster movie, uh, undercover cop story from Hong Kong. So that's what was our main inspiration. We wanted also to have a twist in terms of a more occidental, modern approach for everyone, which is The Departed, for example. So that's our, our main, uh, you know, the DNA of this game. And it's also inspired by real life activities because the team researched the triads, they went and talked to them, and they're, you know, inspired by real life stories that they heard. So, you know, uh, video game world reflecting the real world. That, that's correct. And uh, so the dev team, like uh, at UFG, based in Vancouver, they met some uh, people who were really undercover cops. So uh, they, they wanted to make it as authentic as possible. So let's talk about what we're seeing on screen here. We're just driving around Hong Kong because in open world fashion, you don't have to rush to the next uh, objective, right? You can take your time. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of things to do in the game. Um, you know, we haven't really said like how many hours in the game, but you know, kind of 40 plus. Uh, obviously, it's an open world, so you know, you see a shiny in the corner, and you're like, I want to do that. But right now, we're heading off to the, the main mission, the Bam Bam Club. And uh, I mean, after that, we'll start showing off some of the side quests uh, in the game. Um, right now, we're just. He's driving really smooth, and I don't usually see people drive this smooth in these open world games. You know, they're running into telephone poles, so it's, it's nice that he's doing it well. I know that's how I play open world games. <laughs> I also just like to watch myself crash from a moving motorcycle. <laughs> driving on the sidewalk, being kind of a mean person. But yeah, right here, uh, we have a lot of cinematics. Um, a lot of uh, actual famous Hollywood actors uh, do this. Uh, Will Young Lee as Wei Shen, um, other characters, other people. Who is Jackie, one of his best friends in the game. Uh, we have like superstar like Emma Stone, for example. Uh, she's a... So the cast is very, very authentic. We wanted something like a, that can, uh, you know, describe as as good as possible, you know, the Hong Kong actors, the Hong Kong flavor. So we have a good mix between Occidental, you know, top star Hong Kong and Hong Kong top star also. And, and make sure you don't skip the cutscenes. I know a lot of people like doing that in these open world games. They just like running around doing crazy stuff. But the team spent a lot of work developing this, you know, storyline and everything like that. So keep in there. Uh, let's see what uh, Tom Taylor has over there. We've got another audience question. Tom, take it away. Thanks, Sean. We're swagging out here on the side. Well, my main man, Kedrick. You got a question for the developers, buddy? Yeah. What is it? Oh, what was the hardest part about developing the game? All right, what is the hardest part about developing the game? You don't look like you're gonna Put on your developer hat for a second, gentlemen. What's the toughest thing about this game? Well, some of the things is like building a cohesive, authentic environment that is very respectful of uh, the history that we, uh, the influences that we, you know, just named. Like, how do we say Infernal Affairs as, you know, an influence of our game without kind of putting, setting the bar too high and then living up to that expectation? Um, and also, you know, open world games, they're known for, you know, kind of having all these options for the player to do. How do you build a, a cohesive environment that's just not, doesn't feel like it's artificial and that feel, actually feels like a living, breathing world, you know? Yeah, totally. It's, it's about also having the right content at the right moment just to keep up the pace, you know? Uh, usually, like, you can be very bored if you don't have enough things to do. And here, like, we really wanted to, the, you know, the players to feel like uh, the, the life of a thug. You gotta make sure you breadcrumb the player really well, because I know in a lot of the playtests, 
success we do it but you know sometimes people get you know early in development they kind of go off and they do their own thing and they they you know don't aren't involved in the, in the main plot as much as we can so you got to make sure that the player is interested in all that stuff continually so so let's uh, jump back into describing what's happening on screen it looks like our what, now what's the name of our main character again Wei Shen. I'm Wei. Wei Shen is, uh, it looks like he might be about to have some fun or perhaps not have some fun, depending on how the situation turns out. <laughs> well, in, in the game right now, uh, there's a lot of uh, different side quests you can do uh, in these areas, such as like dating, you can do the karaoke, uh, cockfighting. We're heading to the karaoke lounge. And uh, you, you'll notice a lot of familiar songs in there. Do you know which one it's going to be? What's Benny like? Benny? You the manager? Yeah. I fought the laws on this one, on this demo, so it would be really interesting to see how well we do with that one. Um, and I did not provide the voiceover for that. Uh, Unfortunately, I hear you're a very wonderful singer. Uh, no, no, that, this guy is, though. I mean, get no, no, no. Drink in him and he's the greatest singer in the world. <laughs> no, he's the best. <laughs> But uh, yeah, we're gonna do a little karaoke here and uh, the Batman Club. And what, I mean, what, what kind of side quests do you like in this game? Me, uh, I do prefer doing like you know the triad uh, side quest. Yeah. Obviously, yeah, because obviously I like the combat uh, system in the game. Uh, I like to improve the, I mean, Wei Shen uh, uh, skills, and that's my thing on my side. Yeah, you need to improve them because you need a lot of help when you play this game. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, it's a karaoke. Like you're you're from Hong Kong originally, song. right? No, my parents. Okay, you've been there quite a few times, though. Yeah, and how authentic is this? I mean, is there a lot of karaoke bars in Hong Kong? And Definitely. It, really? It's part of the culture, the Asian culture. So this is what, one of the things, like, we really wanted to make it as authentic as possible, you know? We want the player to really feel like, what's the Hong Kong life? And you can answer this however you want, but uh, is, did you experience any cockfighting over there? And I don't mean that in, in a sexual way, but, like, <laughs> more in the... <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't. I tried to avoid, you know, that kind of uh, sketchy places. You're saying cockfighting sketchy? <laughs> uh, no judging here. This is Comic Con. This place is free of judgment. You can live however you want here at Comic Con. Um, I'm really surprised that you're doing so really well right there, considering the game crashed. Really. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, a lot of the songs, like, one of the songs I like to play is uh, Flock of Seagulls on this one. I mean, I'm a big 80s fan, so. But our, our soundtracks, we haven't really revealed all the sounds yet, or the, all of the songs, but uh, like Sharon Jones and the Dap Kings, we got. Uh, you know, a lot of 80s tracks in there. Uh, we have Rusko is in this, I think. I believe. I think so. Yeah, Rusko is in this. Uh, it's pretty diverse. All right. Well, why don't we field another question from the audience? Mrs. Violence, take it away. Thanks, guys. All right, I'm here with another little man named Khalil. He's awesome. He's allowed to play M-rated games, so this is awesome for him. All right, Khalil, what's your question? Why the heck did you name it Sleeping Dogs? <laughs> he wants to know why did you guys name it Sleeping Dogs? that one so well the reason why is you know like uh, usually like when you're among the dog like you, you try to avoid any uh, you know you're in that cover cop you don't want to to be ca catched by, by the triads because be the your life is between the you know, right uh, on the verge of being uh, yes, you know, dangerous sometimes so it's saying sleeping dogs lie right somehow it just worked for uh, some people so yeah and also it has a, you know, a Tarantino type of uh, your flavor into it because this game, even if it's serious, like we wanted to ha make it fun. So this is some sort of inspiration for us too. So he's an undercover cop. He wants to let sleeping dogs lie. He's working with these criminals. He's not trying to bust them all at once. He has a bigger picture in mind, right? Yeah, he's going after the dragon head. And, uh, do you want... and it takes time like, to go to, up to the dragon head, obviously, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what the whole game is about. But, uh, you know, that's, uh, what's his name? Uh, Nick? I've slipped my mind all of a sudden. Oh, hey. Who the fuck are you? Oh, oh, oh. Uh, no, I have the, the wrong name, of course. Hey, <laughs> or we could just get back to describing what's on screen here. Yeah. Totally. Hey, hey. Let's go back to the screen then. Anyway, what's on the screen right now? Uh, so, uh, can you explain the mission right now? This is such a good idea. I think you should leave. He wants you to know that Dog Eyes isn't your problem anymore. So, yeah, there's, there's a, some kind of a, you know, ongoing stories here where, you know, it's all about power and taking, you know, the. The, 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 the business, you know, and here, like, uh, Wei Shen, his mission is to take down these guys who's trying to, to get the business on top of them. So, like, here you can see the, directly some combat, which is really inspired by the mixed martial art. Uh, and again, like, we've been working with GSP uh, very closely with him. He went several times at the office uh, with the, the developers who developed, you know, all the moves, making sure, you know, how and how, you know, it's going to be a good fight, basically, if it was a fighting with 10 people against him. Pause for a moment here to field another question. T-squared, take it away, buddy. 
Thanks, Sean. Dropping some serious Sleeping Dogs knowledge bombs over here. I got my main man, Kevin. He's got a sick question. What's the question, bro? Yeah. How is working with Square Enix influence the development of the game? How is working with Square Enix affecting the development of the game? How has working with Square Enix affected the development of the game? I'm just going to throw an idea out there. I would like to see some uh, Dragon Quest Easter eggs in there. Just, you know, I'm just going to just throwing it out. Well, we did put that one in Deus Ex for Final Fantasy, but uh, uh, no, the extra time has, uh, you know, with uh, Square Enix has certainly given the team at UFG more time to polish, really, to really make this the triple A game that it kind of needs to be, and that it uh, more representative of the story and, and the qu overall quality. Um, you know, you can see that we're side by side with uh, Hitman and Tomb Raider, so this is definitely a, a product that Square Enix wants to really build and, you know, Danny, bring the triple A out, out of it. Um, Danny, yeah, go I know you're in there. Uh, so on top of that, so Square Enix been launching like Batman Arkham Asylum uh, for the combat. We have the great expertise to make sure like the combat is as good, you know, or even more uh, for, for this game. And also like uh, you've been launching also Just Cause 2. And so we have this kind of thorough knowledge of the open world and how we can make this game as good as possible. And also Dragon Quest Easter eggs. <laughs> Obviously, but we can't say that. <laughs> we can neither confirm nor deny, but you know, it's fun being a part of the Square Enix family, right? And I just earned my paycheck, I hope. Great work, Kyle. Great work. Uh, so let's jump back to what's happening on screen here. Uh, it looks like he's in a little bit of a, a little bit of a tough time. Yeah. <laughs> well, hopefully uh, he doesn't uh, screw up here or, or die or anything. But uh, <laughs> oh, wait. Check out the uh, the environmental the takedowns here. This is one of the coolest ones. So there's a lot of environmental environmental takedowns in the game, and uh, we really want to show them off as much as we can. This is a great part of the game for that. Um, uh, this is one of the many environments. We're, you'll see this mission involved a couple times, the Bam Bam Club. It's a very uh, prominent part of the game. Um, the thing is, we're, we're still banned from saying much about the story because uh, we're keeping it close to our chest because we don't want to give away too many spoilers. That's the thing. So like, I want to talk to more about what's happening in the game. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously, we don't want to spoil the surprise for people. Uh, for sure, like uh, here uh, with the combat again, I mean, this is one of the core pillars. We have three core pillars here. We have the shooting also. And and we have uh, the, the driving. I mean, the driving is a fun arcade type of, uh, you know, driving uh, experience. Uh, most people have been working on a very good uh, driving games. Uh, the shooting, we have a very decent uh, third-person uh, uh, cover-based uh, shooting system. So, and all of these uh, four, uh, three pillars work seamlessly. So you can switch uh, with the other one uh, in a very seamless way. You can tell he, he knows the marketing for this game, can't you? I know. I was yeah. waiting how long until we were going to get a core pillar drop there. there we do have a marketing guy. <laughs> I'm surprised you haven't mentioned the release date yet. When is it? Oh, I, I said, oh the, the release okay, well, date is going to be the 14th of uh, August. North America, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's throw it to another question over there. Tom Taylor, what do you got? All right, so we're still hanging out here. I got my man Chris over here. He's got a sick question. How are you liking the game so far, though? Dude, it's gnarly. The action is really, really cool. I'm enjoying it as well. I'm watching this, and it's absolutely badass. So, what's your question, man? All right, the question is, uh, uh, Square Enix is known for their RPGs. So, what made them want to go uh, with one of uh, a Yakuza game or an action game? Okay, so Square Enix is known for the RPGs. Why going for a, why go for a Yakuza or action game? All right, so why deviate from the RPGs that Square Enix is so well known for? It's sort of actually a recent trend for the company, right? Yeah, well, you don't want you want to diversify your portfolio for sure, and you know, Square Enix has all been, been about like you know putting good media out there and, and maintaining that, and this is just one way of doing that. I mean, if you look at our portfolio right now, we have Hitman, Tomb Raider, uh, you know, the Idols uh, catalog. We have uh, Sleeping Dogs now. I mean, you can't. We do great work in our RPGs, but you know, why not? take these opportunities to make good pieces of media. That's the thing. So As a triple H uh, publisher, you need to, to have your know, presence in every kind of category. And uh, once again, it, Square Enix is not only doing RPG. They obviously specialize in that, but also we have some very good action game, you know, some uh, other type of game that can be very interesting for everyone. No, I have nothing else about it. I mean, it's just all about making good games, and why not if you have the opportunity to do so? so. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, so uh, update us on what's happening here. Okay, I... The man, shirt has a question. Yeah. the man in the banana shirt has a question. Yes, man in the banana, banana shirt, man. a.k.a. Alfredo. He has a question for the developers. Go ahead, man. Yeah, yeah. my original question was, um, was Sleeping Dogs uh, originally True Crime Hong Kong? And uh, if, it, if it was, how much of True Crime did they originally keep? Okay, he said he wants to know why... Uh, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> 
if, if true crime had a little bit of influence in the new Sleeping Dogs, the new if true crime was originally Hong Kong, if it brought into Sleeping Dogs, pretty much like was incorporated. If true crime was incorporated, Sleeping Dogs. It's getting loud in here, obviously. We All right, so we've got a question other. about the origins of this game. Obviously, it started out as a true crime title. Uh, there's a situation there with Activision. Square Enix came along, rescued the game, so to speak. What's sort of the link there between how the game started and what we see here? Well, it's it, you know, I, I can't speak about the, another company or another name that this product might have gone under, but, um, you know, Square Enix had, to, had an interest in finding out, you know, expanding their, their uh, breadth of their portfolio, I guess, and then it just came along, right place, right time, I guess, uh, this was available. They reviewed it, you know, we're not just picking up any game and spending money on it, you know, it's, it's, it has to be a careful investment, so it was just, like I said, right place, right time. Uh, we saw, you know, a lot of potential in this product to be, like we said, uh, you know, right up there with Tomb Raider, Hitman, and, uh, you know, other products, so, we've, we, you know, they invested in the game, and hopefully it'll pan out, so. Yeah, obviously, like, uh, like we said, like, because Square Enix has this uh, kind of knowledge with uh, Batman Arkham Asylum, or, you know, with uh, the other Just Cause 2, I mean, this, this was great for us to be able to work with them with these guys to give them like our knowledge sharing this thing to make sure like we have the greatest game as possible and this is like a you know one I mean the first time we were seeing Sleeping Dogs but hopefully like if things go going well you know the future can can see other games like that it wasn't a stretch like you're saying it to go like oh this is an open world game we've kind of done that before we can you know it wasn't a massive risk in that regard so yeah I get what you're saying Good job. Good job, marketing man. Good job. Good job <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Oh, we're rubbing each other's backs here. Nice job. Nice job with that delicate question. <laughs> it was a little delicate. I mean, we get that a lot. You know, uh, we can't really say a whole lot about the uh, histories. <laughs> no comment. <clears throat> So back to the game here. Uh, what's all right? Some more fighting. Yeah, more, and, fighting. Uh, more environmental takedowns. Uh, he's definitely uh, showing off the entire environment and everything you can do in this regard. Uh, I think the mission's almost over though, and then we're gonna head back into the open world and show you more off of the. Uh, I hate talking about this all the time, but the, the authentic, authenticity of the game is so important to it. I mean, considering so many open world action games do, like New York or other things, and there's nothing wrong with that. But, you know, if you're going to sell Hong Kong in a new game, you better do it right. And I think the, the team put a lot of work into the whole authenticity of uh, the game. So Having an having a Asian uh, city, like, you know, it's very refreshing. And just, you know, like to, to prove... No, it, it is. It is. You're biased. You're right. No, it's not. Like, I'm, being, being from Hong Kong and being there, I mean, I'm very happily, uh, you know, uh, not surprised. Surprise, but very happy to see like some developers take the time to make it as authentic as possible. I mean, you have the NPCs are talking like in real Cantonese. You have also like, for example, if when you're driving, you're driving on the left because I mean, Hong Kong being the next uh, uh, UK, you know, colony. They told me about. They said like, you know, it was a conscious decision to not put it the other way because they said a lot of people might have trouble with this new driving style. But for the authenticity's sake, they wanted to have that actually in the right. game like that. So. Plus, you can also drive tuk tuks as well. Yeah. <laughs> Somehow, yeah. <laughs> Um, no, but no, uh, I mean, it's, a, it's, it's been a long road, and we really hope people enjoy it, you know, I mean, for, for everything that it is. And uh, I, I wonder, were you, I mean, we, we have fans that say this, but were you really happy when there was an open world action game in, you know, an Asian city? Yeah. I mean, totally, like, it, it talks to me, I mean, uh, as a person, and uh, I'm a huge fan of, you know, all these Hong Kong movies, cinema, and culture. So to be able to work on the, this kind of title, I mean, it's, uh, it's very, uh, I'm a lucky guy, basically. Uh, I'm still waiting for my open world art, uh, action game set in the suburbs of Seattle where I grew up. <laughs> I don't know if it's going to happen anytime soon, but maybe. Probably. Maybe if people buy this one and then you pitch it to them, a Seattle one, UFG, maybe they'll be okay with it. I don't know. I mean, Very mean streets up there. you got to watch out. Mean streets of Seattle. Oh, I can't imagine, man. You must have nightmares at night. Trauma. Constant trauma. <laughs> That's great. So uh, we're going to hit up more of the uh, action op open world elements now and... Uh, I guess show off more of the city. Yep. We got more questions over there? Yeah. Yeah, let's see. Do we have another question over there? Right here, he's talking to his pops. They're trying to come up with a sick question. Let's see if they got one. Okay. Can you tell me a little more about the triads? Can you tell them a little bit more about the triads? Ooh. We got a story question for you. I'll, I'll let this guy handle that one. Um, <laughs> yeah. 
All the triads? Because you were in the triads, right? Oh, no, 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 no. I don't have any tattoos. So. Former, former <laughs> undercover agent, you know. No, I mean, I mean what, what we know, like, historically, like, it's a very old, you know, kind of organization, criminal organization. Uh, for, I mean, I can't talk that much as much as, you know, certain people who met some tri uh, I mean, undercover cop. Uh, our team, like, uh, to make it as authentic as possible, they've been talking with some undercover cop who've been infiltrating, like, uh, obviously the trials, and they put their life in danger. So this is what we try to describe here. I mean, uh, here this game describes really, like, uh, what can be uh, an exciting life of being a triad in the game. So, play the game, I mean, who uh, you gonna get? Yeah, yeah, I mean, there's, there's a lot of uh, information out there in the triads, and uh, people can certainly uh, search around the web for it, but... Uh, yeah, I mean, we, yeah. we, do, we do have, like, a, one of the trailers uh, we've been uh, publishing, uh, like, about the Hong Kong, and uh, I, I think, like, uh, we give some details about the triads. I feel like all this sidestepping around the story stuff, there's one giant plot twist in this game that you guys don't want to talk about. Right. Yeah, there's a couple. Yeah, yeah. There's a couple. We can't talk about that. Okay. You know, Undercover Cop Story is about treason and, uh, you know, trust, so obviously there's a lot of that. And a lot of drama, what the obviously. Hell? Like I said, I mean, Infernal Affairs. Yeah, I mean, uh, Infernal Affair, The Departed. That asshole that's the, the kind of example you, you can get. Can't yeah, just punch I'm, I'm not going to get it out of us. You're not. <laughs> it's the marketing guy. You have to play. You have to play it. You have to twist this guy's arm really hard to get it out of him. So. Yeah. Think about dumping that girlfriend. All right. How much do we have left of this demo right here? Uh, as much as you want. This one it can actually go on for a while. So if you want to continue. Is it possible to end with one big explosion? Can we can we wreck something? Destroy something? You can. I think he can do a hijack car, right? That'll work for me. Oh no. Oh, he didn't unlock uh, the. Pop, the the skill. I want to see something explode. I want to see something triumphant and some destruction. Anything you can think of? Uh, I, I guess it's up to our driver there and his situation he's in right now. So no pressure on you or anything, sir. Yeah, yeah. Just put the you know little password in for explosion. I, it's on a console. You there's no password. Or anything. I'm, I'm just making in the it. middle of the story like right now. So, uh, like, well, right now he's in a very kind of open area, so let's see if he can uh, do something big. But uh, Maybe uh, a giant car wreck or something. <laughs> I mean, there's certainly a lot of opportunities in this game for stuff like that, but, uh, you know, it's, it's not like a lot of other uh, open world action games where it's, you know, um, taking objects and making it very unrealistic. Uh, this one's very grounded in reality, so uh, you're not going to see a lot of the massive explosions, ridiculous items so, and stuff like that. It's all about authenticity, you know, right? Yeah, it's about, you know, other games do that. At all, but, you know, this is just what we want to do at this one. So I, I don't know if we can have a big action segment on key like that. But, uh, uh, yeah. All right, okay, I'll let you off the hook. Uh, we've got another question over there. Oh boy. Alrighty, so I'm here with our main favorite crew member, Henry at the base station. What's up, Henry? How you doing? How are you guys? Good, good. Good. We appreciate all your help this week at Comic Con. But I hear you actually have a question for the developers. What, what is it, man? I do. I'm a fan of the game, but how does it compare to Grand Theft Auto, and how you know what it makes it stand out? He wants to know, how does it compare to Grand Theft Auto, and what makes it truly stand out? All right, so how does this game compare to Grand Theft Auto, the sort of hallmark of open-world action games? You know what, I would take this one, I, I can say something, but I'm going to let the marketing man have his way with this one. Good luck, sir. Try to answer this without mentioning core pillars. Okay, there you go. Well, there's... <laughs> so obviously, the, the gameplay is very tight. Uh, we have a very deep... Uh, um, deep system combat. We have a very deep uh, cover, cover uh, shooter combat, uh, and we can do like you know some crazy stuff like you know hijacking a car while driving. You know in a hot pursuit. We have uh, like obviously this demo don't show that today, but we have a lot of also explosion, some drama moments, some treason. You know some very deep story, uh, and you know most of uh, the open worlds like uh, you playing the role of a thug, and this time like you playing really the role of a cop. And this is like, a, you know, you have the fun of uh, being a thug, but also at the same time you have the morality between us. The narrative is a very important part of this. It may be one of the pillars. <laughs> no, but uh, uh, one of the, the key differences are, you know, Hong Kong environments, the uh, parkour-style action gameplay, and also um, the fact that, you know, you can pre-order now and have GSP in the game. Well, GSP's uh, pack and his move. So I guess Grand Theft Auto might not have... I mean, I, I will say, as somebody who's played every Grand Theft Auto game, I've never seen a hand-to-hand -hand combat system that deep in a GTA game. That, that's the core, right? Because, uh, I mean, these guys would be inspired by, again, a Hong Kong movie, a Hong Kong kung fu movie, and we really wanted, like, a, you know, to showcase that aspect in this game. That makes it very particular. So it looks like we're just about ready to close down, but maybe we can see one more really cool hijacking. 
Or, or he's gonna jump off the motorcycle. <laughs> we're waiting. We're waiting for one awesome hijack. Uh, I don't know if it's gonna happen, but hopefully. Uh... Let's see. He's gonna try to hijack a car. Let's take a car. Oh. So do you want to talk about the Tyler Stout art? <laughs> I mean, we've been working with uh, you know for Comic Con. Like uh, we've been working with Tyler Stout. He's a very famous artist. Like uh, you can see here in the back. Like we have some uh, very nice uh, design from him. Uh, I mean, he's very excited. Like uh, we wanted something very particular in terms of branding and in terms of visual identity, uh, and this is it. Just like a marketing guy to talk about the branding. Well, you know what I'm concerned about is I just saw a sweet carjacking on screen, <laughs> and that means that that means that we can finally let you guys go. Yeah, that's right. It's yeah, been I fun. It's been fun. There we go. That's one of our unique things that separates us from other open world games. There we go. All right, guys. Well, I appreciate you taking the time to describe what's uh, what this whole game is all about. I know you mentioned it before, probably several times, but uh, I'm going to let you mention it one more time here at the end. Sleeping Dogs. When is it going to be out in stores and what are the platforms? The 14th of August of this year. Well, Kyle, Andre, thanks a lot. Guys. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, everybody, thanks a lot for watching our all-access coverage here at Comic-Con 2012.